Good day, viewers, and welcome again to another time of refreshing in God's presence. Jesus speaking in John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. The scripture reads, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We trust that as we abide in the place of study, in the place of the word today, that the truth of God's word be revealed, Amen. and that truth will unleash freedom Amen. in our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We continue to build on the sub team that was introduced last week, equipped for pilgrimage. And last week we considered the girdle of truth. Today, we'll continue to build on that sub team looking at breastplate of righteousness at our specific to as our specific topic. Under the theme for the year, God's children as pilgrims to the heavenly kingdom, manifestation of God's reign on earth, and under the sub theme that says, equipped for pilgrimage too. And our aims under today's topic will be to study the breastplate of righteousness and to discuss righteousness as a spiritual shield against sin and eternal death. We are equally grateful to God for his manifold blessings, provisions to us, even in this season, even as we build up for the DIFCON conference. We are also excited that our fathers in God are here, whom God will be using mightily to reveal his mind to us. By my right is the Venerable Chema Okorie, is the Archdeacon, Durimi Missionary Archdeacon Ray, under the Diocese of Abuja. Father and God, you're welcome to the program. Thank you, my brother. Uh, it's my pleasure uh, view viewers for today's program. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. And then by my left is the Reverend Canon Dr. Kayode Abegunde. He's a priest. St. Matthew's Anglican Church, Maitama, equally here in Abuja Diocese. Father and God, you're welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Good day, viewers. Once again, our aims will be to study the breastplate of righteousness and to discuss righteousness as a spiritual shield against sin and eternal death. In our usual manner, I encourage you to sit tight. For the next few minutes, God will be revealing his mind to us. I'm your anchor, Chukwebuka Ejekam. Our background text, I'll be reading that. Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 4 to 9. Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 4 to 9. I'll read that quickly from the New King James Version of the Scripture as we trust the Lord to enable us begin today from there. Ezekiel 18, verse 4. Behold, all souls are mine, the soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine, the soul whose sins shall die. But if a man is just and does what is lawful and right, if he has not eaten on the mountains, nor lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, nor defied his neighbor's wife, nor approached a woman during her impurity. If he has not oppressed anyone, but has restored to the debt of his pledge, has robbed no one by violence, but has given his bread to the hungry and covered the naked with clothing. If he has not exacted usury, nor taken any increase, but has withdrawn his hand from iniquity, and executed true judgment between man and man. If he has walked in my status and kept my judgments faithfully, he is just. He shall surely live, says the Lord God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, be, Thanks to God. be to God. Introduction. A Roman soldier's breastplate is made up of bronze or chain mail and serves protection for the heart, lungs, and other organs. 
Without it, the soldier is vulnerable to attack and death. Our text today exposed us to the fact that the only weapon that can protect us from being vulnerable to evil thoughts and sinful attacks in the heart that leads to spiritual death is the breastplate of righteousness. So we are seeing clearly that even for the Roman soldier, it's important to have a shield that protects, that covers the heart. And what we are reading is that that protection is targeted at protecting the heart, lungs, and other organs. And these, to me, are vital organs in the system. So it's important to know that righteousness can protect a man. We trust that as we discuss in detail, the Lord will reveal his mind to us. Amen. We are also excited to also announce the presence of our sign language interpreter, Sister Susan Awodi. And we pray that the Lord will bless all of us, even as we discuss further, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father in God, the Venerable, yes, define breastplate of righteousness in the context of our text today. Canon Father and God, you help us with again that main text, just for emphasis. Okay. Ezekiel 18, 4 to 19, and then Venerable Ephesians chapter 6, 14. And we'll take your submissions. Okay. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father, as well as the soul of, of the Son, is mine. The soul who sins shall die. But if a man is just and does what is lawful and right, he has not eaten on the mountains, nor lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, nor defiled his neighbor's wife, nor approached a woman during her impurity. If he has not oppressed anyone, but has restored to the debtor his pledge, has robbed no one by violence, but has given his bread to the hungry, and covered the naked with clothing. If he has not exerted usury, nor taken any increase, but has withdrawn his hand from iniquity, and executed true judgment between man and man. If he has walked in my status, and kept my judgments faithfully, he is just, he shall surely live, says the Lord of yeah. God. This yeah. is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's interesting to know that it is God who is saying this. What a promise. Yeah. Ephesians 6, 14. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14. <clears throat> Stand therefore, having guarded your west with truth, having put on the breastplate, of righteousness. righteousness. Awesome. Breastplate of righteousness in the context of our text and the Ephesians scripture you just read. Yeah. <coughs> the believer is not left unguarded. Awesome. And unprotected by God hmm. in his journey of pilgrimage here on earth. Thank you, sir. You recall that last week we looked at the Giddle of Truth. Giddle of truth. Mm. Now, when you look at the Roman soldier or even the Israeli soldier of that time, when you talk about the breastplates and the Giddle of Truth, they go hand in hand. Mm. You cannot put on one without the, the other. other. And when you lose the belt, invariably, you have losing the breastplate. The breastplate, yeah. So both of them goes together. Now, when you look at the breastplate of righteousness, is one of the defensive weapons or armor God has provided also. for the believer mm. to protect him from sin and the attacks from of the, the enemy. enemy. And then taking that, when you now look at where we read, in Ezekiel 18, 18, you will see that this is the summary of the Ten Commandments. Yes, exactly. And so what the Lord is saying that for us as believers, there is the need for us to obey the word of, of God, God, which is the guide of truth. So if we neglect or disobey the commands of God as it relates to God and our fellow human being. Now, there is no how the 
breastplate of righteousness will work. Yes, sir. Now, here in Ephesians chapter 6, six verse 14, 14, it just telling all that it is our duty to put it on. on. <laughs> God has provided it. And so, it is my duty, yes, sir. it is our duty to wear the armor. And then where it could be seen is on the daily affairs of our lives. Awesome. With our fellow human beings, whether believers or any hmm. other person. Now, when you look at people like Moses, Daniel, Abraham, and all that, even when you look at Joseph in his rulership in Egypt, yes, sir. you will see where righteousness is epitome. Hmm. That even the people we are saying up you, Joseph. Joseph. We, you are the one we know. Hmm. Because of the fair justice leadership he has provided, provided on the people. So coming to us today, there is no how we can move or serve God or be in the society without, without. clear demonstration of righteousness whether in leadership in the family in anywhere we find ourselves and then when we fail it there means we are not putting, putting on the breastplate awesome father and god i mean this is interesting already. very 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 without this and it's got to be demonstrated like the venerable father and god has said is not it ought not to be hidden. You know, Jesus was speaking, he said, Let your light so, so shine. shine in the office, in leadership, whatever. Mm -hmm. This ought to be demonstrated. Your thought around this matter, breastplate of righteousness. I think it's critical. Yes, it's very actually. critical. I think the venerable has said it all. It's the summary of the law. Mm. Unlike the Roman um, breastplate that you saw physically, this one is not feasible. But by your fruit, mm. It, will it is be made. when you see, oh, this man is a man of God. Because he said, um, we are to put it on. How do we put it on? The, the, where would I say, if a man is just and does that which is right. Mm. So, verse 4 there is saying, um, no, verses is saying, if he has not uh, eaten on, eaten the, mountain. on the mountain, he has not gone there to worship. Which means it's duty to God. Mm. And, the, and verse 9 also emphasized that, that if he has walked, he has walked in, in my, my status, status and keep my judgment faithfully. You see, these, these two are talking about our duties to, to our God. God. If you look at 7 and uh, eight, 8, it's our duty to our fellow Philip. human being. So I think Venerable have said it all. So it is when this thing is manifesting in our life, because it's not like the mm. something we put on then people will be seeing the fruit in us. Awesome. You know, that verse 7 has yeah. robbed no one, one. by violence. Yes. Mm. I'd like us to put a check around our lives. Mm. Have you been, you know, that scripture says, Tekel, you have been weighed in the balance and you've been found wanting. Is there anything here that the Lord will be requiring of us in the course of today's discussion to get back to him in repentance? He has robbed no one of violence, but has given his bread to the hungry. Are there those around us who are hungry? Have you withheld your bread from them? Are there those around us that you've not covered, even when you have more than enough abundant clothing to give to them? He has withdrawn his hand from iniquity. There are those whose feet are quick to run towards yeah, evil. evil. But for the man that will live, the man that is just is the man, who withholds his hand from iniquity. He has executed judgment between man and man. You know, when I... <laughs> it's easy if it's a matter between God and man. Yeah. Say because of God or because of... <laughs> but when it's between the man, man and man, man, how do you execute judgment? This is what guarantees life. The ending part of that verse 9 says, This one is just. He shall. Sure. Not just live. The he Bible emphasizes surely lives. And the end of the matter is that Thus says God yeah. Himself. The Lord will help us. Amen. Canon Father and God. Yes, sir. What is the importance of breastplate of righteousness to our Christian livelihood? Mm -hmm. You read for us Jeremiah 17, verse 9. Venerable sir, Romans chapter 2 of verse 2. 
and I'll read Ephesians 4.23, and then we'll welcome your thoughts, sir. Yeah. Jeremiah 7.9. Mm. 17.9. Yeah, do I go? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. I read, the heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked who can know it. Romans 12, verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Ephesians 4, verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. What is the importance of the breastplate in yeah. our Christian living? So you see, the original breastplate is to protect the heart. And this breastplate of righteousness is to protect our heart. The psalmist says, um, the proverb says, uh, we should diligently guide our, our heart, heart. Because the issue of life flows out of flow it. From there. So when, when, we are, when we are well equipped with the words of God, so when trials come, when tribulations come, when temptation comes, and when uh, trials of life came, comes our way, mm. we will be in position to take the right decision because the word of God lives in us. It's able to guide us. Mm. You, you, you remember those people in, we refer to in the Acts of Apostles. They had the good words. But when tribulation and problem comes, they, they run away from the... Mm. So it is, to, it is to prepare us. So when you look at um, uh, what um, uh, Jeremiah 17, 9 is saying, he said, the art is deceitful and desperately wicked. So we must not depend on our own heart. Because by nature, our heart is corrupt. Defied. It's defied. So we are selfish. So it only needs, we need the grace of God, which is the remedy. When the spirit lives in us, that is when we can overcome and do what is right. Yes. And that is what... Romans 2 is saying, say, do not conform to this world, but be renewed. Be transformed, be transformed by, by the renewal of your, of your mind. mind. So, so these are the words of God, except they are in you. So when temptation comes, it is as if you are the T-junction of the world. But when the world is rooted, in you. you say, no, close your eyes and Follow pursue the right, the right thing. Awesome. Venerable, just quickly before we go on break, the importance of the breastplate. Yeah, you see, the importance of the breastplate has to do with the mind, our thoughts, our mental faculties, and then our attitudes. They have to be protected. It is the breastplate of righteousness that helps Guaranteed in the protection. renewing of, of our, our thoughts, mind. our mm. minds, mm. so that when it will not be business as, as usual, usual, now you are a Christian, if there are certain ways, you know, in our ethnic localities, in our country or countries of the world, there are traditions and customs, cultures, mm. and culture, the way they do their things. Mm. And then when the word of God is planted in you, it is not the way my culture no, or my tradition or my country yes, sir. does it. It is what the word of God says. The because, standard is the scripture. Yes, because your mind has been renewed and transformed Form. by the word. And so you have no other thing to bring awesome. out awesome. than what is in you. Awesome. And it is the breastplate of righteousness that helps one hmm. to do that. Awesome. And then when we start doing it, we grow in it. Awesome. If we fail to do that, we are now retrogressing. Hmm. Can I tell us that your culture, that's your tradition, is not over and above the word of God. Even the word of God, ancient word, as we suppose it to be, mm. is even older than your culture. That's Bible right. say that in the beginning, because you see some people who will be quick to tell, say, this is my culture, this yeah. is my culture. Yeah. We, yeah. The word of God is eternal, forever is settled, it's older than your culture, because in the beginning mm. was the word. Mm. 
the words were with God and the word was God. God. It is the word, this word that bears righteousness that brings about transformation. You know, before we go on break, Father God, I even realized that exaltation, even for a nation, mm. comes by reason of righteousness. righteousness. So we are praying God for exaltation. Sean. It cannot happen until you and I, in no, our individual closet, yeah. begin to pursue the God's kind of righteousness. righteousness. So that when I am right before God mm. and you are right, right we will see the dividend mm. in our country. And I discovered in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 2, that righteousness again protects a man and delivers him even from death. Yes. The Lord will help us. We'll be back in a moment yeah. to continue. God bless you. Now streaming, now analyzing, now assessing, now discussing, now sharing your thoughts on everything and every issue that affects you. ACNN's Now Streaming discusses the issues trending and the matters that matter to us all. Join us every Monday to Friday at 10 a.m. on ACNN as we go in-depth into every issue that impacts our lives, our communities, and our country. Welcome back, child of God. It's been an interesting session. God indeed has been refreshing us via his living word, the ancient word ever true. Recall that we've been discussing the breastplate of righteousness as one of the cardinal tools that God uses to equip us on our pilgrimage journey to heaven. Recall also that I've been in the studio with our fathers in God, the Venerable Chema Okuri and the Reverend Canon Dr. Kayode Abegunde. Welcome to the program once again. Thank you, Thank you. And also our sister, Susanna Wadi is also here helping us with the sign language mm -hmm. interpretation for our differently abled audience. And we pray that the Lord will uh, bless all of us together as we go to the second part of today's study in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Question 3. Venerable Father and God, according to Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 13, you will help us read, the eyes of God cannot behold sin. Mm -hmm. Just read it. You are of a purer eyes than to behold evil mm. and cannot look on wickedness. Mm. Why do you look on those who deal treacherously? Justify this statement in relation to Canon Father and God, yeah. Isaiah chapter 33, okay. 14 to 15. Okay. And then I'll read Romans 3, 23. Okay. So we we'll place that yes. first scripture parallel and then justify that looking at these other two scriptures. Yeah. Romans 3.23 for me and then Canon Father and God Isaiah 33, 14 to 15. Should you tell me? No. Uh, you okay. can read. The, I read uh, Isaiah 33 from verse 14. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has seized the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire. Who among us shall dwell with the everlasting burning? He who walks righteously and speaks uprightly. He who despises the gains of oppression. Who gestures with his hands, refusing bribe. Who stops his ear from hearing of bloodshed and shut his eyes from seeing evil. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Romans 3.23, popular scripture. For all have I've sinned and, and come short of okay. the glory of God. Father and God, justify that in relation to Habakkuk 1.13, where you read earlier. Yeah, when you look at Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 13, and then Isaiah, where we read Romans, he just simply saying that God is revealing his nature. You know, presently people, yes, breastplate of righteousness is an imputed righteousness. And when God has given his nature in us, it is meant to be seen. Mm. People must see it. 
And then God in his nature mm. cannot behold wickedness. wickedness. So his nature is in us. And then when I now claim that I have the breastplate of righteousness, but I am not honest, I am not fair mm. in giving judgment. So where is the breastplate? It begs to ask where that breastplate uh, so is. So it is not there. Because God's nature cannot behold sin. sin. Now, when the breastplate, which is God's nature, is in me, hmm. it enables me to say no to fraud. Yes, sir. Because of that nature, it enables me to refuse bribe. Hmm. In our nation, Nigeria, today, if you don't give, or take. take, they will be looking at you that you miss road. Hmm. But you are only exhibiting what God, God has deposited in you. And he says, you must not listen or indulge yourself in plotting evil, evil. even to the extent of murder. So, what the Lord is saying is that if you put on this thing, the breastplate of righteousness, then you are. There is a relationship. A relationship. Your heart, your spirit, your mind is related with God. The nature and of so God is in God's you. God's nature is, is in you. you. Awesome. So whether you are talking about Old Testament or New Testament, it is God. And we are the ones that say this is old or new. Mm. God of the old is still God of the new. And he's saying he can't nah, behold sin. sin. And so the truth is there. That when we have the breastplate of righteousness, then what is said in Isaiah 33, 14 and 15 will be clear. Awesome. And then Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says it all that the wages of sin is death. Is death. Hmm. So if I put it on, death is not there. But if I the refuse it, to put sure. it, then eternal death is no matter what I claim. Yes. Hmm. Awesome. You know, something st struck me, verse 15 of that Isaiah chapter 33. Yeah. And I'm asking that God will help us, especially help us as a nation. You see, he who despises the gains of oppression. Of oppression. You know, sometimes inadvertently, especially for those of us in the political space, mm. we oppress to eat. supporters of our opponents just to gain that political leverage. We oppress. Even to the point of killing. Killing. But the man that is righteous and like Venerable alluded, that carries the very nature of God, mm. that the nature of God is resident in his heart, is the one who despises it, who wants to play politics clean. It's not true that politics must be dirty. Mm. It's not true. We, de we, de we deceive ourselves and say it's a dirty game everywhere in the world. It's not true. There are men who have led in uprightness. You know, Samuel wanted to end his ministry. He called Israel. He uh, said, could so, there be any one of so you? Subjected himself to examination. Public scrutiny and say, if I have taken what does not belong to me, mm. attest to it today. Mm. How many of us can do that? Mm. Are we rejoicing in the gains of oppression? Mm. Are you eating and somebody somewhere is crying because you're eating? Maybe because you've oppressed him or her. Father and God, you're taught around this. Yes. Um, what I want to make out of this is this. God's position on sin has ever remained sin. The soul that sin must die. die. You can see, Isaiah wrote this um, book 150 years before Ezekiel, where we read for our this thing, mm. came into being. If you read Isaiah chapter 39, it eh, he, he, he predicted or foretold that the Israel of that, the Babylonian captivity is coming. Hmm. And one day, and they too knew they were in, they were not upright, mm. but they refused to change. See what happened in that uh, uh, Ezekiel. Mm. Oh, they were saying, um, 
it is the sin of our fathers that cost us. That cost us because there was a proverb very uh, uh, common with them that the father has eaten sour grapes, grapes the, and the, the teeth of the children are set at the age. <laughs> but God was saying, no, I'm, I'm dealing with individuals according to the work of their hands. So God expected us to change. He has given us his son to die for us. But up the moment, we still find it difficult to find a place in our heart for Jesus Christ. Because what is needed from us is not that difficult. That is nature. It has to be in us if we must live. Hmm. So my takeaway from this is that this thing is still a warning to us who are living. Awesome. And let us not begin to say, is this people, uh -huh. this generation, uh -huh. like because some of us say, is the that Exodus 25 has said, till the fifth or fourth this generation. generation. No. We can make amend. Someone said that the best place for a man to start is from where he is. Mm. Where you are now, you can cry out to God and ask him to have mercy on you. No. Question four. How can our righteousness be texted on earth? And I would like to paraphrase that question to also accommodate how and why will our righteousness be texted on earth? First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 13. Canon Father in God, you help us with that. Venerable sir. First Peter 1 7. And I'll read same first Peter chapter 4, verses 12 to 13, as we begin to round off today's discussion. First Corinthians 3 13. If you're there, venerable, you can read. Uh, first Corinthians 3, yes. 3 what? 3 13. 3 13. First Peter chapter 1, verse, verse 7. Okay. okay. That the genuineness of your faith be much more precious than good that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to be praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Awesome. Okay. First uh, Corinthians 3 13. 13 says, each one's work will become clear for the day we declare it because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. And then first Peter again, verse chapter 4, 12 to 13. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you as though some strange things happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Why and how can our righteousness be tested? Uh, Looking at all these things. Yes, uh, if we look through the scripture, we've seen people being tested at one time or the other, beginning with Abraham. God asked him to bring his, his only son, whom he loved, and willingly to pass the truth. Then came Moses. He refused to become the daughter, uh, the son of the daughter of Pharaoh. of Pharaoh. Then you think about David. Saul was pursuing him up and down, and God put Saul's life at his hand. He refused when his servant said, Let me just strike once. him down once. He said, No, don't <laughs> touch the anointed. Hmm. I'd be shy. Yes. Then we talk about uh, Joseph. The madam offered herself to him a platter of gold. He said, how can I do such a thing to God? Sin against God. Cannot. Then we read about Chadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They said, we will not bow. We know the king will serve, we, the God will serve, will save us. If at all he did not save us, we will not bow. Bible said in that chapter 4 verse 16, O king, we are not careful. To answer you, you in this matter. <laughs> hmm. So, 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 now, all the areas we have read, like the first Corinthians 13 till now, was saying when our righteousness is tested, then it will reveal our sincerity, it will reveal our faithfulness, and it will reveal our strength. Then our our contribution to the body of Christ will be revealed. Hmm. Then if you look at First Peter, he was telling us that try us. Test us the same way fire test gold. Gold. When you put gold in the fire, all the impurity will be removed. But when you put straw in the fire, it will become ashes. Mm. It is gone. So, so 
all that we have been doing, whether we are, we are serving God deceitfully, we are serving, you know, there was a man in Second Chronicle, a king, Amaziah. He, was, he did what was right, but not, not with, with a heart that is loyal. Mm. Uh -huh. So God knows when we are serving. So when we stand our ground during trials, during trouble, he said it will earn us praise, it will earn us honor, and it will earn us glory when awesome. Jesus Christ comes again. Yes, awesome. Yeah. Mm. Mm, child of God, he said that the genuineness of your faith might be revealed. Don't celebrate yet until, until you are tested. You know, some people are quick to celebrate. They've not written the exam, but they've already awarded themselves first yeah, class. Fine. In this kingdom, you must be willing to undergo the test. Yeah, that sure. is what proves the sincerity of your work with God. I have seen people who say, God did not give me this, and so I'm giving up. You are not benefiting God in this kingdom. We must all be tested. And the Bible said, every man's work will be, be tested, tested by, by fire. fire. So that the stuff is made of will be, be revealed. revealed. Mm -hmm. Venerable. Yeah, you know, one of the elements of fire is that fire is impartial. In his dealing, dealing with, with anything. anything. <laughs> so, and then, God in his dealings with us has the day of testing. Ooh. And then, his testing is different from the attacks of the enemy. Yes, sir. God allows tests to come our way to prove our genuineness. Hmm. Now, sometimes we might fail the test, just like uh, Peter. You know, Peter boasted. Boasted. Mm. Even if every other person, I will not. Way, I will die with you. On that fateful day, the, rooster, he, the whole crowd. thing just became clear to him. And then the Lord just watched, hmm. looked at him. He now realized. realized. And I tell you that from that moment he repented, he buckled up. Yes, sir. And never allowed the enemy to trick him. Hmm. And so for us as believers, there might be times we have maybe have failed in our standing for the Lord mm. when the need has mm. come. Mm. Please, the Lord is giving us another, another chance, chance. Yes, so sir. that we will stand with him. And then, you know, the reason for the testing is to prove our genuineness. Before promotion, you must write a sir. Yes, sir. It is not in some quarters now, it is continuous assessment. Mm. Whether you fail or not, continue. continuous. No, <laughs> it is that you write the exam, yeah. sit for it. If you pass, you, you pass. pass. If you fail, you okay. fail. So, God, in His intention to reward, to commend, there must be tests awesome. to prove our genuineness. Child of God, are you in that crucible of texting now? Mm. Are you going through some moments that perhaps it's difficult for you to decipher what God is doing and where he's taking you to? Hang in there. The grace of the Lord will help you. Amen. Amen. That will say if a man's strength fills him in the day of adversity, this of little faith. that man's strength is small. May your strength not fail you in Amen. this day of text. Amen. And may you come up in righteousness, still holding on, still holding on. You know, for Job, the devil thought, ah, he's worshipping God because of all the provisions. Mm -hmm. All those things we are taking away. But ghost, Job still testified. I know that my Redeemer mm -hmm. lives. In another scripture in the book of Job, he say, even if he slays me, yet will I trust God, yeah. in him. Keep on trusting God. He will come through for you. Amen. And your righteousness will be proven. Amen. Conclusion. Isaiah 33, 14 to 15, revealed that the sinners in Zion are broken down. Fear had seized the ungodly who are suffering for their ways. They asked themselves, who amongst us shall dwell in Zion? Where is the splendor of the divine majesty? Where the splendor of the divine majesty is like a consuming fire? Who of us shall dwell in Jerusalem? Where the ungodly are judged and delivered into hell for an eternal burning? And the answer is in our topic for today. Those with the breastplate of righteousness. Christians should guide ourselves with this so as to be able to withstand 
the righteous throne of God. I think Psalm chapter 1 is relevant here because it's akin to what we are seeing. And I would just like to quickly read it because that psalm empowers. He said, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinner, nor sits in the seat of discomfort. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. The man that will be blessed is the man who walks in this standard level of righteousness. Verse 3 said, He shall be like a tree planted by rivers, rivers of, of water, water that brings forth its fruit in season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does, shall the man prosper. prospers. I think also Psalm 15, verse 1. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? Verse 2. The one who, who walks, walks uprightly, uprightly and walks righteousness and speak truth in his heart. You know, some people are saying truth with their lips, not in their not heart. In their heart. He, say, he who does not back with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, mm. in whose eye a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear God. He who swears to his own heart and does not change. He who does, he who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall mm. never be moved. The scripture is speaking. Food for thought. No fear of the enemy when equipped with the message. Hmm? No. no. I think, Wrong sorry. One. Food for thought. To avoid vulnerability to sinfulness, arm yourself with the breastplate the of, of righteousness. righteousness. To avoid vulnerability to sinfulness, arm yourself with the breastplate of righteousness. Memory verse, we take it together. Romans chapter, chapter 12, 12 verse 2, two and it and says be, and be, be not conformed to this world but, but be transformed by the renewing of, of your mind, mind that, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect way of God again we take the memory verse Romans 12 verse 2 and it says and be not conformed to this world but, but be transformed, transformed by, by the renewing of, of your mind, mind that, that you may prove what, what is that right good and acceptable and perfect way of, of God. God. The world has its standard. There is a pattern the world does its thing. But the scripture tells us from our memory verse, do not be conformed to that okay. standard. Do not pattern your life by the wills, the fleeting pleasures of life. Hold on to God. Let the word of God be your standard. And can I tell us, God is not ready to lower his standard for any man. Mm -hmm. That's In the book of 2 Timothy 2, 19 following, he say, the seal is sure. The Lord knows those who are his people. Let the man that named the name of the Lord depart, depart from, from iniquity. We are grateful to God. It's been a time of refreshing. God has quickened our hearts unto righteousness by reason of today's study. And we pray for as many issues that the Holy Spirit has raised in today's discussion. If we need to go back to God in prayer, that that grace will be released for us to respond accordingly. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're equally grateful to our resource persons, our fathers and God. Venerable sir, thank you for coming. Thank you, it's my pleasure. It's always a pleasure having thank you. you. We pray that the work of God in your hand will continue to flourish and prosper. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father and God, Thank you. Thank you for having me. May the Lord continually make lines fall unto you in pleasant places. Amen. Thank in you. the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And our sister, Susan Awadi, thank you for the good job you're doing. May heaven continue to remain open to you. Child of God, walk with God in righteousness. It's indeed peace. It shall be well with you. Amen. We see you again on this side, same time next week. Until then, keep on living for Jesus. Goodbye. God bless you.